Yo, welcome back from the break. It's still new day and we promised you um, a great health segment where we talk about obesity, which is something that is uh, affecting a lot of Ghanaians, not just Ghanaians, but, you know, across the world as well. Before we do get to that um, uh, discussion, a uh, quick one. Mask Sealand trailer um, knocked down um, the Ashaiman Bridge because, you know, the goods contained in there were obviously much, much higher than the required height. Let's take a look look at this. Um, if you know that you're using that side of town to get to wherever you are, kindly um, find a way to avoid um, that side. It's, it's, it's certainly uh, not a good site at all. Right. This, this is uh, a shaman, we understand. And yeah. It's obvious that the, the trip had a much bigger load, bigger than the, or, or taller than the height. That is required. Obese. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't see obese. I mean, it is dangerous and yes. it's caused a lot of traffic al along oh. that stretch. Uh, so if you're, if you're using it, I mean, it's, and it's unavoidable because if you need to use the motorway, right, you would um, still, you would still have to that go point. through there. And this is, I, and so I'm now thinking, this had come from obviously the Tema side of, of, of town. Yes, certainly. Or even if it left the, the Accra side of town, somebody should have checked to confirm whether or not this was the right height, height and even the weight because we've been complaining about how our roads are being uh, messed up indeed. every now and then by overweight vehicles and, and the height and, and this is what we find this morning. It could also have a dangerous effect on the bridge itself That's because true. it could ruin the, the integrity of the bridge. It looks it already. Exactly. And, and we, had ha we have had a similar thing at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle, the Ooh. overpass, yes. Mm where a truck actually fell off, you know, right from the top. The good thing was that there were people, there were not people down there at the time. Oh, so wow. So they were saved. And it, it, because it was over, overweight, yes. or it was and too it, high, so the center of gravity. Exactly, and it brings to mind the kind of conversation we need to start having about people who own these trucks. Mm. Um, they usually would rent it out to these drivers, mm. and they would give them some amount of money to pay, a, you know, a certain sale that they make to make. And they need to make at the end of every uh, day mm. of a working day. And if you are not too careful, you will find that uh, such things will, will occur. I mean, it's, it's not proper. Um, it also brings to mind how, as a country, we have not had a proper national towing system because this shouldn't have been there up until this time. The minute it happens, somebody sends a panic uh, instruction out there or a request to yeah. the, the police MTTD yeah. and quickly has to be dealt with. But so many issues to talk about. Uh, we hope that the police MTTD will start dealing with it expressly so that um, the pedestrians and motorists are not um, disadvantaged in any way. Because I've always maintained that we spend too much time in traffic, mm. getting to work, too much traffic from work, okay. and so our tired. actually work output is reduced to, to zero and we, we feel that we're working too hard and yet not being productive enough. Mm. This could be one of the many reasons that we need to look at. But let's switch into health now and we've been joined by DSP Dr. Faisal Ayambila. He is uh, a senior medical officer at the police hospital. He's joining us this morning as he does on most occasions to talk about a phenomenon where people grow overweight and out of shape. And usually you have society say, oh, why are you fine, pa? Oh, oh you're fine, wow. you're, you're growing very well. Uh, yes, and then you will have people in that state, true and true, knowing within themselves that, well, they will have to uh, get on some medication, whatever diet it is, trying to drink concoctions mm. and trying to trim down and get back into shape. So, DSP, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for your time, Doc. Thank you very much. What Thank is you. obesity? Yes, okay. So, obesity is medically defined. Mm. as the accumulation or pathological accumulation of excess fats mm. to the extent where this accumulation of fats mm. begins to have a deleterious effect on the health of an individual. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. And, and how does it occur? I'm yes. curious. Are people born with it? Do people acquire it <laughs> along the way? It's a very good question you've asked. And um, it's frightening to note that 25% of all Ghanaians between the ages of 15 and 49 are currently obese as we speak. Mm. And that just brings wow. to question, yes, um, some of these factors we have to discuss. Yeah. Most of the time, obesity would be gotten as a result of an interplay of three factors. Okay. Okay. The first factor usually is um, excessive food intake. Mm. Secondly is lack of physical activity. Okay. And the third is genetic susceptibility. Mm. Oh, mm. Okay. But then coming back to your question, yeah. it also 
there are also some medical conditions at birth mm -hmm. that would predispose you to being obese. Okay. Oh, wow. uh, yes, exactly. But it's mostly just what you eat, yeah. mm. um, the amount of exercise you have, and your genetic susceptibility. Okay, so before we carry on, what's the difference between being overweight and being obese? Exactly. You know, it's all an issue of classification. Okay. It's almost um, looking at, it's almost like looking at different hues of the same color, red, okay. deep red, and all of that. And mm. um, that brings to mind the calculations we do to arrive at a diagnosis of obesity. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have what we call the body mass index. BMI. Mm -hmm. Okay, the BMI. So what pretty much happens is, let's break it down for our cherished viewers. Okay. What happens is we take your weight. Let's say I'm 100 kilograms, mm -hmm. even though I'm not. But let's just say I'm 100 <laughs> kilograms in weight. And uh, my, white, uh, my height, sorry, my height is 1.78 uh, meters. Mm -hmm. What happens is you take this weight, 100, divided by 1.78 times 1.78. Okay. You arrive at a figure of, let's say, 30. Mm. The normal BMI or the normal person should be between 18.5 and 24.9. Okay. That is normal. Then when you get to 25 to 30, we call you overweight. Mm. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. So a lot of us are overweight. Okay. I like, um, you know, okay, let me use myself. I'm a bit overweight. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and then you move on to obesity. Obesity okay. is when this figure is above 30. Okay. Then at the point of obesity, we have all these deleterious effects. But the danger is that we feel too comfortable when we are overweight. Yes. And then within a year or two, we end up being obese. Hmm. The, the cultural perspective uh -huh. to all of this, I mean, in a society where people think that, well, if you start getting your actual way people start <laughs> thinking oh yo, yo, you look sick i uh, mean if you're what's wrong with you mm, yes, and, and, yes. and all of that how often do you get that from people who come to you in the hospitals uh, what? and what do you say to them exactly once again it's always good to situate these discussions in the context of the broader society mm -hmm. and what society makes of all these concepts Indeed, what you have said is true. I even asked my parents this morning while preparing to come in, okay. and they mentioned to me that in the past, it was the case where women living in Accra and Kumasi okay. actually took medication, okay. mm. you know, in the form of prednisolone. Right. Wow. And this prednisolone, they took it deliberately mm -hmm. to make them gain weight. Oh, really? Because when you gain, yes, it, it was a phenomenon in the 70s mm. oh, wow. all the way to the mid-80s. Okay. So they actually took these tablets on a daily basis just to put on weight so that everyone would think that they have, um, you know, they are living, they are living, well. living exactly, <laughs> and that they are, you know, and that they are being um, well taken care of, mm. especially amongst them um, young, young women. Mm. Then you, you know, you contrast this to what's happening in the outside mm. world, where you actually have women being shamed for being big. Right. So society also does play a role mm. when it comes to these perceptions, because if you say, well, thick is beautiful, and of course thick is beautiful, mm. but then when you, you keep going on with these, um, um, you know, these words and then all of that. It just encourages people to feel comfortable. How, how do you determine or identify that, look, I'm growing out of where? I mean, you mentioned the BMI. Yes. But not many people have, say, a scale at home or, you know, anything to measure their height with. Exactly. How do you then determine? Is it when you start feeling that your clothes are beginning to tighten up <laughs> a bit or, or what? what do you, how do you decide? Yes. Johnny, it's a good question you've asked. Um, the World Health Organization currently is saying that more people are currently being sick mm -hmm. because they are overweight okay. mm. than because they are undernourished. You mm -hmm. know, when we were growing up, we had these pictures of people in war zone right. yeah. where they were malnourished mm -hmm. and that caused yeah. a lot mm -hmm. of problems. But now in the world, we are saying people are actually having illnesses because they are overweight, mm -hmm. even more than um, is the reverse being true. Mm. But then back to the question, um, it's usually self-diagnosable. Okay. As you mentioned, you realize your clothes are not fitting as well as usual and you realize you become a bit clumsy. Mm. But the best way to know is if you could get into a hospital, any of our government facilities, okay. mm. you do a quick weight check and mm. check your height as mm. well. Mm. And this also leads me to the point of us being complacent. Okay. That, oh, as for me, I just have a little bit of the tummy here, mm. Mm. and I'm not that big. It's just, you know, to show that I have a bit of an, we call mm. it the investment, mm. Mm. or the beer belly. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wrong because... Mm. That is even the worst form of obesity. Okay. The sort of fat we the accumulate. The subcutaneous fat. Exactly. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that sort of fat actually produces active hormones that predispose us to diabetes, mm. heart right. diseases, and strokes. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, wow. And mm. so um, those who um, have it genetically, yes. how do you help them out in such situations? Yes, a very good question once more. You would want to know 
um, with regards to any particular case of obesity, what the predisposing factor really is. Okay. If it's as a result of genetics, then we usually have a way of going about it. I'll give you an example. Look at this um, tennis player, Serena Williams. Yes. She trains a lot, mm. but then just look at her muscle bulk. Yeah. Serena Williams is not <laughs> going to reduce to the size of, let's say, a Victoria Beckham anytime soon, no matter Very how true. hard she trains. So you first of all want to understand the genetic predisposition. You acknowledge it. Then based on what we see, we give you the right form of training regimen or okay. gym exercises, the right form of diet, mm. and the right form of possibly medication that would help you to come to your normal weight. Mm. Yes, just because someone is exercising by running 100 miles does not mean you have to do the same. Mm -hmm. You may have to use a few more weights, okay. or someone is doing 30 minutes, you may have to do a little more than those 30 minutes to achieve um, um, weight loss. Weight but if it's because of a medical condition, mm -hmm. Most of the time, when we treat that medical condition, things get better for the person. The, the impact of this on, on us, yes. our health, uh, and, and all of that, talk, let's talk about it. Your personal economy, your health, let's talk about those two. Yes, Johnny. <laughs> Just as you know, we, we discussed before we, we started this segment of the show. Let's say if you want to go to Tema or Akosumbo okay. or anywhere yeah. else mm. above the motorway, mm. you would definitely have to use the motorway. Right. Yeah. That's what obesity does. It's pretty much the highway to all sorts of cardiovascular diseases, mm -hmm. diabetes, mm -hmm. and hypertension. Mm -hmm. In fact, I can touch any part of my body, okay. and I'll tell you what obesity does there. Wow. When I oh, touch wow. my mind, yes, I touch my head, migraines, okay. headaches, oh, wow. mm -hmm. predisposition to strokes. Okay. I touch my eyes, it leads you to getting diabetes, mm -hmm. and with time, that will take away your sight. Right. If I touch my heart, that's cardiovascular disease. Mm. And then if you shift a little to the lungs, difficulty in breathing mm -hmm. mm. predisposes you to having worse asthma attacks, mm. predisposes you to having lots of breathing problems. Mm. You go to your tummy, the fat literally lies over the liver okay. mm. and impairs its ability to function. That's a problem. You have a lot of heart burns as well. Wow. So I could keep going on and on. Even on the skin, mm. you have lots of stretch marks, which could be a bit unsightly. Mm. Okay. And these large folds of skin also create areas where you could have fungal infections and mm. stuff you don't want That's to see on morning too. television. A personal economy. <laughs> let's, let's deal with that. So you have obesity. What, yes. are, what, what you're contending it a uh, barrage of uh, ailments or yes. conditions. Yes. How does it drain your pocket? It does drain your pocket um, indirectly. Let me give you an example, Johnny. Um, you'll be in the hospital, someone comes in and tells you that, oh, for the past two years I've been trying to have a child, mm -hmm. and she's a lady. Mm -hmm. You realize that all her problems with okay. regards to fertility and ovulation mm -hmm. is just because of the excess weight. Wow. wow. Yes, and she, she may have been going around different places trying to find some remedy mm -hmm. for the fertility problem. Mm -hmm. So that's a typical way in which... Um, you could have mm. a drain on the pockets because you're obese. Mm. And of course, it also reduces your productivity mm. in the sense that the amount of work you're supposed to do, your energy levels really don't support the, you know, the sort of activity you'd have to do to mm. earn a certain amount mm. of money, yeah. for example. And so, you know, health is always Th tied Does to it affect your sexual way. drive? <laughs> it does in a major way, in a very major way. It? In men. Because you see, the thing about fat is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people people trivialize this a lot. I'm mm -hmm. a very I'm very passionate about this okay. issue. The thing about fat is fat is an organ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The adipose tissue begins to have like a brain of its own. Mm. Okay. Begins to release hormones. Okay. You know, mm. and some of these hormones increase your appetite oh. and reduce your sex drive as well, mm. oh, okay. and they cause all sorts of health effects. And so as you begin to accumulate fat, especially the one around your beer belly region, mm. it begins to have an impact on your sex drive. Can, can it shortchange a man in terms of the length of his organ uh, <laughs> if he becomes obese? We've heard that. Yes, Is yes, it true? Yes. Is it medically proven? <laughs> medically, it's not proven. Okay. But then this is what we tend to see. When you have so much fat, mm. of course, and it says this way, you don't get to view everything properly, you know, in its proper perspective. And mm. so it seems to you as if, oh, it's sort of shrunk or it has yeah. reduced in size. But then when apparently you begin to lose some weight, then relatively everything else begins to look much better. Mm. Mm, all right. exactly. uh, if but you're watching no the conversation, sorry, if you're watching the conversation, we invite you to join us with your thoughts and comments on WhatsApp 020216 Also, uh, Facebook feed is on. If you go on to TV3 Ghana with a hashtag TV3 uh, New Day, you can always, always send us your thoughts, comments, and questions 
doctor is here will respond to them quickly. So we're, we're waiting for them. We've seen a few of them on the screens. We'll read them and get Doc to respond to us, mm. some of them. But Crystal, yeah. I'm sure you want to talk about prevention now. Um, yes, um, and, and in children also. I realize that there are some children who are, uh, you know, quite overweight and yes. obese. And for some, they actually train, they do sports and so on. But they don't, you know, lose um, much of the weight. Exactly. And then we have, um, you know, the, the way our society is set up, anybody can tell you anything. Exactly. I remember when I was a child, <laughs> someone could just, you know, drive by and shout, Obolo, <laughs> you know, and things like that can make you feel depressed. How yes. do we, you know, handle these things with, with the children? It's not only you as a child who stories. My parents are watching. <laughs> they, they used to call me Polytank all oh. the way from my way to school. <laughs> <laughs> All the way from school to my way, uh, you know, walking home. Mm. Yeah, so these are some of the problems. But that brings to mind another risk factor. Mm. You know, risk factors would like to look at the individual and then you look at it at um, a population level. Right. Okay. The individual risk factors is what we discussed, exactly. eating and all of that. Mm. But at the level of the population, childhood obesity mm. is inextricably linked to adulthood obesity. Ooh. And the main problem is that when you're a child, you like things that are sweet, so your parents yes. give you the biscuits and all of that. Mm. What we tend to see is that usually that accounts for the major majority of the cases of obesity. Oh. There's always the genetic uh, susceptibility as mm -hmm. well. But in most cases, it's just because of the social patterns of us eating anything we could lay our hands on. But then as I said, if there's any medical condition, any congenital birth defect that is causing all of these, mm. um, now we have the expertise to manage and make sure that things are okay. So the take home message is that okay. childhood obesity, mm. as much as possible, should be reduced so that we don't have um, the progression from the childhood obesity to obesity okay. in adults. Okay, exercise and diet. Uh, uh, you well, said it. People will jog from here onto the Yemen <laughs> sun, <laughs> climb mm -hmm. onto a bri, yes. dovetail into the town, yes. the yes. cool atmosphere, mm. quaff beer, eat tomato, <laughs> and come all back. that. What, are they doing cost 90? Yes, or, Johnny, or, or, just or. as you have. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's very interesting how we try to do some of these things just to, as one would say, tickle yourself and laugh. Mm. The thing about exercise is, and we are all guilty of this, mm. is the fact that it must be consistent. Okay. It's not like, um, like sometimes I do, I just get angry, go ah, to the yes. police fitness center, right. lift everything, yeah. mm. and then the next day you don't go again. Okay. Mm. It should be consistent. Right. So if it's something you are doing for 45 minutes mm. on a daily basis, mm. you would want to make that four to five times a week. Mm. But then if you go and climb a immense that come down once a month, and you have your beer and your fufu <laughs> alongside. Energy in, energy out. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you have sort of just bent what you've eaten. Exactly. And the net so, effect something is must kill there. a man. man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the brothers say. I mean, Friday night yes. is here. Something must kill a man. man yes. A little beer, a little pork, a yes. little this, a little that. And the difficulty, Johnny, is the mm. fact that when we look beyond the aesthetic components, the fact that you've put on weight, mm. sometimes you just do an ultrasound scan. Okay. And you look at all oh. this fat sitting on the liver, sitting mm. on the wow. kidneys, sitting around the heart. And it's very disheartening. Mm. You realize that the gain, the weight you are gaining outside, is the same weight you are also They're gaining, gaining inside. inside. Interesting. Mm, that's difficult. Huh. Medication. People. I've come across people who are on all manner of medications trying to tone down. Yes. Yeah. Um, let's talk about it, whether it works or not, and the dangers associated with that. Yes. Um, the simple answer to this question is it depends. It depends, first of all, the type on the type of um, obesity you are dealing with. Okay. And because, you, of course, we've seen on television where people have even had to have um, surgery mm. yeah. just to correct um, the way the right. appetite is right. and the way they've right. gained weight. Mm. So it really just depends on the type. For mm. some people, the main problem is um, with leptin, okay. yeah. this hormone that uh, controls our appetite for food. Okay. Yeah. And so for them, you can give some medication to antagonize that hormone, mm. and mm. then within three to six months, they begin to lose weight. Okay. But for others, it's purely exercise and dietary advice. Mm. Okay. And that seems to happen more at the population level. For example, you go to a place like USA, right. where you realize that it's African Americans mm -hmm. and Hispanics who tend to be obese, right. mm -hmm. and that is not the case for the Caucasians. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. such people, you'd want to advise them to engage more in exercise and cut down more on the junk, f uh, the junk food mm -hmm. that they may be consuming. So somebody says, look, I won't pay to go to the gym. I'd rather have a lot of sex because that's <laughs> exercise too. Uh, can you fight obesity with excessive sex? <laughs> As again, I usually have said, um, you know, numerous occasions on this show, yeah. on this noble platform, is the fact that 
for everything you do, you want to know the cost and the benefits. Right. Mm. You know, predisposing yourself to sexually transmitted infections, that's against losing weight. Mm. Um, you may solve one problem and create another one. Right. Mm. And so you'd want to look for more proven methods of mm. burning fat within a short period of mm -hmm. time. And Johnny, these days you go online, you could see workouts that last just 15 minutes. Okay. And how, that would help you to gain, to burn, let's say, 300 calories mm. at a go. Oh, mm. wow. Um, so there are very alternate routes, even though, of course, uh, mm. sexual intercourse also falls within that domain. That okay. domain. Yes, so exactly. let's look also look at the diets um, really quickly. Uh -huh. You know, now there's there's always, you know, a new diet that's in town. I remember, yes. you know, back in time, there was the Atkins diet. Everybody was yes. having proteins and things like that. Yes. And right now, there's the keto thing that everybody's jumping onto. Yes. Would you really advise that they jump onto these trends or yes. they come and see you, yes. the nutritionist? Exactly. So? Frequently, I've said this in my consulting room on a number mm. of occasions, that... The regular diets we have, you know, this MPC and all of that, mm. is really not what is making us big. What makes us big is really the chocolates, the fizzy drinks. I'm careful not to mention any brand. If not, <laughs> in trouble, the fizzy drinks, the yes. biscuits, mm. and the chips we eat in between our meals. Those yeah. are the things really that account for more of the weight gain that we have. Mm. And we would want to put this out there because um, lots of companies have lots of preparations. And of course, this also depends on your state of health at that time. Because if you, let's say, you have some form of cardiovascular disease or kidney problems, mm. eating uh, and taking the Atkins diet or a protein-rich diet may yes. not be the very best mm. for you at that time. Okay. It may actually cause more harm than good. Mm. And so all these things, you would want to situate these um, treatment modalities mm. depending on the individual okay. and what would work best for the person. But wholesale is always, we just talk about exercise, diet. And mm. then, uh, well, talk yes. about what to do to prevent from getting obese. But let's read some messages uh, here on, on the show. Okay, so uh, John Nilante van der Poy says from, uh, he's from Community 2, BBC, in their quest to lose weight, some people stab themselves or reduce the amount of food they take in. Is that a step in the right direction or there are adverse effects associated with this? Talk. I use myself as a typical example. You know, over the past year, I've been studying abroad. So there was a time when I wasn't actually having enough to eat at a particular time. Mm. And I felt, okay, I was losing weight, so all good. But then later on, I realized I was developing some sort of ulcer, mm. gastritis, mm. things like that. And so I had to quickly revert to okay. what I knew was um, the right thing to do. So those are some of the problems. Um, the fact that we want you to lose weight does not mean that you must do so very drastically. Mm. Because as I've always said, you create, you lose your weight all right, then mm. now you have an ulcer. The, mm. the, the times that you eat, yes. I mean, does it also, if it changes, if you don't have a regular time, does it affect you? It has a big effect on the way, it's, the effect is actually overrated by all of us, but okay. it does have some effect. Mm. For example, okay. the banku you eat at 8 p.m. <laughs> before sleeping at 9 p.m. You know, it's slow to digest, obviously. Yeah. And from first principles, you're not doing any physical activity per se mm. that would help to uh, digest those calories at that time. So you'd want to be sure that you eat your uh, breakfast like a king, yeah. uh, lunch like a, I've forgotten the saying, but then the yeah. dinner yeah, like, like a, a pauper. Exactly. exactly. And then you make sure that the bulk of the meals you're eating are in the early parts of the mm. day when mm. you'd have the activity to burn it off properly. Okay. Doc, there's one more question. It says, please, can fat make one impotent? Oh, I think we discussed that. Yes. The fact that, um, you know, all this fatty tissue releases lots of hormones mm. that dysregulate the, you know, the maintenance of libido and also dysregulates sperm production. For some, so for some people who've come to the consulting room to tell us that they've had fertility problems, okay. the only treatment has been for them to lose weight and they've been fine. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> Let's go on to Facebook, Crystal, oh, yes, and yes, yes, uh, yes, check yes, out yes. Uh, what people are saying on Facebook. Lots of comments. Yes. Um, Frenzy says, obesity is obesity. It's a disorder involving excess body fat being stored in the body that easily increases the risk of health problems of a person. It mostly results in making, oh, did I take it too far? No, it mostly results right. in taking in more <coughs> calories than are uh, burnt by exercise. Okay, so she's actually um, helping us Educating, with information. Yes, yes. yes, it mostly caused by um, overeating, age, emotion, sex, and at times environmental factors can cause obesity. The symptoms can be stroke, heart disease, lung problems. I think she's reiterating mm, um, yes. what you, you said. Obesity is the way of food that contains fats and carbohydrates in the nutrition. I don't quite understand that. <laughs> um, interesting topic there from Al Hassan. 
Um, Kamal says, people who drink alcohol with big stomach also obesity. As in, do they, are they also yeah. obese? Those the, beers. The, yeah, beer, beer, the beers. And the whiskeys. <laughs> yes. You're living you a know? champagne life. Exactly. You know, there are two main forms of weight gain. You mm. know, we have okay. the pears, you know, pear-shaped. Okay. And then we have the apples, the round, you know, the oh. apples. That's the people who gain more centrally. Okay. Yeah. If Mr. you are... Mr. Onion. <laughs> <laughs> or you look like a tomato. <laughs> oh yes, exactly. All of Even that. Even better, then, pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, we keep saying that people who gain weight more in the pair, in the hips and in the thigh region, mm. you know, have a much less propensity to develop cardiovascular diseases oh. compared to those who um, gain the weight centrally. Okay. When you gain the weight centrally, the fat sits on the liver, sits on all these organs, mm -hmm. and it's more internal than when you gain the weight peripherally. Right. What, what do you, right. what do you right. say to the women who say that, well, that's my selling point, my hips and, <laughs> you know, a bit of my mid-session so I can get to wear my, my tights and my yes. jeans right. and my yes. hot pants. Yes, exactly. And, uh, what do you say to them? Yes, usually what I say is that you know, good is good, but then <laughs> when better is available, you'd want to go for better. Mm. Okay. And then uh, ultimately you say good, better, best. Best, exactly. So then you see someone in the consulting room, you tell her that, look, mommy, if you could just do 30 extra minutes, then the fats will become thick. Okay. What we are looking for actually is thick, not okay. fats. Okay. Ah. And there's a big difference between the two. Like being I always use. Oh yes, of course. Mm. Look at the likes of Serena Williams. Right. Okay. And then all of that. You can see she trains a lot. Yeah. Right. She's big, but when you look closely, you see this is all pure muscle. This is yeah. Pure muscle. So exactly. thick is muscle, muscular. Flesh. Thick. You want flesh on bones, not fat on bones. Exactly, because okay. the fat itself <laughs> begins to become a bit unsightly. Mm. And then when you come to this compromise with them, they actually do realize the sense in what you're saying. That even though you're in your cabin and sleet, things could be better if you lost, let's say, an extra five or six kilograms. Ooh. Way forward, what do you advise, I mean, from, from your consulting room? What do you say to the public? Yes, anyway. from the perspective of the consulting room, now the World Health Organization is saying that, um, like I said, a quarter of all Ghanaians now are obese. It's mm. a problem. And the World Health Organization is saying that up to two-thirds of the world you know, global population at risk of being obese mm. by the end of 2025. And wow. indeed, they have shifted their focus or their paradigm from undernutrition to, to overnutrition. Over mm. So now it's a big issue that obesity is predisposing us to all these sorts of um, cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, mm. and things that we could really prevent if we took the right decisions and then made some dietary changes. So mm. as much as we have the sedentary life, we are blessed with having cars, and we are mm. blessed with better living conditions now, let's not forget to take 30 to 45 minutes of the day to mm. do some sort of exercise that would make us sweat and ensure that we could live longer, more fulfilled lives. DSP, awesome. Dr. Faisal Yamila, yes. thank you very much thank for your time. It's always been a great resource on, on the show. Mm, uh,